Now, it's interesting to note that asset pricing theory has always been treated well. Uh, even before any statistical tests showed that it really worked, uh, it was on the cover of Institutional Investor Magazine. And here's, I got the cover from the library. They've got this beta cult here, and here the natives go in there bringing gold or dead goats or something. And they have uh, the beta cult, the new way to measure risk. And this is quite the contrast with, say, efficient markets hypothesis, which started out and, and to this day is uh, held up to ridicule by most people as, as a silly theory. Uh, people thought the beta theory should work even before data said it should. Now, if you watch my video number three, I go over the empirical tests, you know, the creation of the CRISP data, which is about the same time they created the theory of the CAPM, uh, initial test on mutual funds, um, the first real test, which was by George Douglas, and then the first real confirmation, which was around 73, um, which dealt with errors and variables, and created this nice little graph, look, everything looked good. Then you have the role critique, uh, discovery of the value effect, the size effect, calendar anomalies, which turned out to be ephemeral, and then all sorts of other anomalies, APT tests, blah, 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 blah. So then we get to the following conclusion. So in summary, where are we? Well, size, value, and momentum are related to returns. And it's not clear why or if they're real. And for size, we see if it's come down in, in degree uh, by a large amount. Beta, however, is not related to returns. If you adjust for size, it's just not there. And this has been seen internationally. Um, if you know that stocks have higher betas, in general, they don't have higher returns in the U.S. or any other country uh, once you control for size. Delistings, daily returns, really bias your uh, expected return tests. Most anomalies, such as, say, the calendar effects, were ephemeral or spurious, and uh, the people got excited about them and burned on them has left a mark and a lot of skepticism. And lastly, sophisticated tests have been a distraction. Uh, none of the things that we know to be true about, about uh, cross-sectional stock returns, such as that beta does not work uh, because of size, or that size, value, and momentum do work, were uncovered via, say, GMM or walled tests. Uh, so a lot of time is spent on the sophisticated econometric testing, uh, I think, is a red herring and hasn't been very fruitful uh, in application to the equity data. But that's the equity tests.